Captain John McClelland. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. As you heard, my name is Captain John McClelland, and this afternoon I have the honour and the privilege of presenting to you the Royal Signals White Helmets. Now, before we start our show, I just have a couple of safety announcements. Whilst the guys are highly trained and highly skilled in what they do, sometimes accidents can happen. So, to that end, if you see a motorcycle coming towards you with a rider who is looking very panicked, or in fact no rider whatsoever, I just ask you to keep your wits about you. And should anything happen, please do not feel like you need to get involved, as I have trained medical staff on hand and they will deal with anything. Now I've seen there are quite a few dogs around, there are lots of loud noises, there are bangs, so make sure you keep them on leads because we don't want them running away. I'll now look over to Sergeant Arnold to see if we're ready to start. Ladies and gentlemen, please give a huge round of applause for the White Helmet! So we're going to start today for play with just a quick warm up lap, just to get the bikes warmed up, although it's pretty warm as it is. And just to get my riders warmed up, I can tell you they're pretty warm as it is. And then we're going to start some of our very close and very quick crossovers in the centre. Born back in 1927, if you heard, this is our 90th season. Sadly, it is our final season, but it means that you lucky people get to choose for one final time before the team is disbanded and my riders go back to the regular field army. So being led out the front there by Sergeant Arnold and by Corporal Ascot, each one of these riders rides with a pair, they ride with a partner. You'll see them do that little loop and then they'll split off and they'll go on their own separate ways. Now using these cones around the outside, they're going to be looking over their shoulder at all times to make sure his partner is exactly where he should be, that he is still upright. As they hit their markers, they accelerate on these seven feet the edges to try and get as close as they possibly down when they come on through. Everybody is still standing as they form up and move back in. How about we have a huge round of applause there for my opening riders. And now marching out very smartly in the far corner, you will see Corporal Paul Day. Along with Corporal Mackey, they're going to perform our very first trick. And this trick is known as the Double Jimmy. Based on Mercury, the Messenger God, these guys here are performing the double jimmy. Now this is the thing. Okay, they were performing the double jimmy. However, looks like they're going to give up on that one. So they were going to ride that all the way around. But ladies and gentlemen, as Corporal Mackey rides off forwards, let's give them a big round of applause for trying anyway. Now this is a live show. Sometimes things do go wrong. Hopefully we won't have any more today. Up next we have one of our first year tricks. Actually being ridden by one of our second year riders. This trick is known as the Angel. So Sid Grieve here, he'll set the speed on the bike, and just using his body weight, he'll steer the bike around. Now he makes it look very, very easy, ladies and gentlemen. However, having thrown myself on the floor a number of times trying that trick, it is not as easy as these guys make it look. Up next, we have the trick known as the Swallow. This is being ridden by one of us, our first year riders, Sid Timmings. He's the one stood up on the top. So like very much like a skier, he has two plates on the side of this, and that's what he's using to steer the bike around. And on the tank there we have Sergeant Wynn. Just enjoy the ride. And now if you look in the centre of the arena, you will see two of my bravest, most courageous, most stupid white helmets lying underneath our human jump boards. Under the watch fire there of Lance Corporal Dane Ryan, he's going to make sure they're in exactly the right position, ready to receive two to three hundred kilograms of man and machine. As they hit their markers, they accelerate off and they go for their jumps. Now these are classic bikes, sometimes we have issues, I saw Corporal Mackey there riding off, it looks like he's got a flat tyre, but clearly the show will go on and they continue around for another pass. Now ladies and gentlemen, when we rearrange these boards for one final jump, I'll just let you know about the Black Peak. 
Now the black peak is that one, is that thing that one of my riders has to wear on his helmet. And he is the person last responsible for dropping one of our classic motorcycles and allow those precious handlebars to touch the floor. And it's the mark of shame that that rider has to wear on his helmet. He is on the field today, you have already seen him. Let's see if you can spot him as he comes around. Now, ladies and gentlemen, as my rider set up for one final jump, how about we have a big round of applause there for my jumpers? And I'd say, maybe more importantly, how about we have a huge round of applause there for my board holders? Now, the next trick you'll see coming into the arena is known as the hanging ladder. Hanging on that ladder, we have Sig Reed, he's the one upside down. And then we have Corporal Clark steering the bike around. Now our bikes come in two different types. We have a normal road bike, or a normal bike, and this has the throttle, the gear, and the suspension of any normal bike. And then we have our trick bikes. Now these bikes have had all of the suspension removed, and they have sticky throttles that allow the riders to be able to remove their hands, as being perfectly demonstrated here by Corporal Clark. Now I mentioned to you the Black Peak earlier. If you haven't already spotted him, he is right on the front of this trick. That is Sergeant Wynn, if anybody's taking note. Now this trick is known as the Four Ts. It's actually being ridden by the second man in there, Sig Timmings, because he's the one responsible for the speed, so he's got his foot on the brake at the moment. But clearly they're working together in perfect harmony, perfect teamwork to steer this bike around. Next up, we have our resident gymnast, Lance Corporal Peaver. Along with Corporal Mackey, they are performing a pillion headstand. Now for anyone here who has ever tried to do a headstand, I'm sure you can appreciate quite how difficult this is. Not only because he is doing a headstand on a motorcycle, but also because there is no suspension, it's very, very bumpy. So ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, how about we have a huge round of applause there for Corporal Beaver for working so hard and for staying upright. The next trick you'll see leaving the pits is known as the two bike fan. This is one of our smaller shared bike tricks. And this is something that anyone who's come on our selection for course has had to master just after a couple of days of being with us. Now it's important to note at this point, there are no supports or straps holding any of our tricks other than the ladders you can see. Nothing's been held together by supports. It's purely being done with the strength of my guys. So ladies and gentlemen, as he's giving you a wave there, let's give him a little bit of a wave back for Cobble Ray. Now some of our tricks, they sort of name themselves. We look at them and we think, what should we call this? And we looked at this very next trick and we decided we'd call it the throne. And of course, what does any self-respecting man do when he's on the throne? But he gets out a magazine and he gives it a bit of read. Being written here by Corporal Danny Goodwin, this time he's using his feet to steer the bike around. Now we think using your hands is far, far too easy. So we tried to see how many different body parts we could use. And now it's the part of the display that my insurance company absolutely hates. Because we are wheeling in my nice, shiny white helmets car, and we're going to send two of my bravest jumpers over it. Now those with eagle eyes might notice there are quite a lot of dents in the top of this car. And if you saw earlier, you may see that these jumps don't necessarily go according to plan. So as I first jump here, Lance Cooper Wilson sets off. Let's give him some encouragement to clear that car. Let's give him a bit of a round of applause as he comes on up. And a lovely clean jump. Now our next jumper thinks that's far too easy. That's good when you're here, he wants to make things more difficult. So I'm putting four of my most disposable, least popular white helmets underneath, and we're going to try again. So once he gets that command, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, let's give him some encouragement. He's going to get that wave from Sergeant Arnold. He's going to set off, get into fourth gear, get as much speed as he can. Let's put our hands together to give him a bit of encouragement as he comes on up. And yet again, my car survives. Ladies and gentlemen, let's have a huge round of applause there for my two jumpers. Now, one of our more frequent wearers of the Black Peak is about to come out. For this trick, is very, very difficult. Lance Corporal Peaver here is about to perform the reverse ladder. So he's going to set the speed on the bike. He's going to get himself comfortable. And then once he does, he climbs up that ladder and he steers it around. He should give you a wave. If he is waving, please wave back to him. Please give him a round of applause. And then once he comes back down the arena, he'll get himself nice and comfortable again. And he'll climb back down and take control. 
Ladies and gentlemen, that is very difficult. Let's give him a big round of applause so he takes that bike there. The next trick you can see is known as the Cossacks. Based on that famous dance position, the Cossack, we have three riders on this bike now. On the front we have Corporal Mackey, he's the one in control, so he's the one who speeds it up, slows it down. And as you can tell from the massive smiles of the two Cossacks hanging off the side, they clearly love, absolutely love to be in this position. So we've had two bikes crossover. This time, I think the lads are warm enough, we're going to make it a little bit more difficult. And we're going to add another bike into the mix. Known as the Irish Whip, we now have three motorcycles crossing over in the centre of the arena. So they line up, they hit their markers, they accelerate on as they come on through. Now this is really where the dust makes things a little bit more difficult for them because they mostly can't see as they're coming on. So practice and precision is important as they hit their markers. you will see our famous fire frame being brought in. Now this is a rite of passage for any white helmet. Every single one of us has had to jump through the fire on a live display in order to earn the right to wear your white helmet. Up until that point, you have to wear a black one and it just marks you out as somebody who's not quite a member of the team, who hasn't quite done the training. Now ladies and gentlemen, you are probably gonna feel a little bit of heat and you are pretty much guaranteed to see some smoke, but I can I guarantee that you're not going to feel quite as hot and smoky as you are going to be for my five jumpers today. Now you might notice as my riders pull up, they're all knocking their helmets forward. This is to protect their pretty features. Make sure they still have eyelashes and eyebrows as they come on through. As we bring on the fire, here we come. So once that has built up to the highest point, Sergeant Arnold will give the command for the first rider, Sig Timmins, to come on through. So he'll set off, he'll get into second gear, he'll stand up, lock his legs, duck his head, and he accelerates on through. Next up we have Sig Grieve coming. That's Corporal Wilson. Corporal Coughlin, who I know whose family is here today. And then finally, to show them how it should all be done, we have Corporal Mackey. Ladies and gentlemen, let's give a huge round of applause out for my fire jumpers. Now, if any of you have taken photographs during that part, please send me to us. It is a bit of a pride thing here. So the idea of the fire jumpers, as they come through, their back wheel should hit the floor and their front wheel should be up. So please send them in, only if they're good, actually no, especially if they're bad, because we do like to make fun of each other. But as we put the flaming wreck in the centre of the, uh, the arena out, I'll just let you know how the guys come to join the team. So we are all serving members of the British Army, we're all Royal Signal Soldiers, all bar one. Many of us have done operational tours before they've come to the team. They then express an interest in the team and come along to a two-week selection course. At this point, they don't even need to know what a bike is, although it does help but they are taught from the very basics of how to start it, most importantly how to stop it, 
and then they build up to some more of our simple tricks. If they're successful on that, they then come for a six week training course, and that's when they face the fire in our graduation show up at Blanford Camp for the very first time, and they get to wear our coveted and iconic white helmets. They stay with us for about three or four years, and then they go back to the regular field army where they carry on their normal jobs. So it looks like this fire isn't quite one to go out today. So we're just going to leave it burning to make things more interesting as the next tricks come out. So the next trick you're about to see is known is known as the ladder headstand. Cool day here, he saw it earlier on being done on the seat and he thought that was far too easy. So, along with Corporal Ray here, they are doing it up the ladder. Now this is very difficult, it has been a bit hit and miss ladies and gentlemen. So as they come round, providing he stays up, let's give him a round of applause there. Corporal Ray has been having a few issues with it, but today he has done it. I think, considering how difficult he has had, let's give him a massive round of applause as they come on in. Now we've had two bikes crossover, we've had three bikes crossover. This time, my riders are going to do those crossovers, but they're going to do them in reverse. So once again they line up, they hit their markers, they accelerate towards the fire, and they come on through. Once they get to the top of the arena, they'll give a little nod to their partner to make sure he's okay, his bike's okay, but most importantly, his partner's brakes are okay. As they line up for the next cut, they hit that white marker, they accelerate on towards the fire. And once again, they have that nod that nod of approval to make sure everything's all right as they come round for the final pass. Now, ladies and gentlemen, I've mentioned a few times now we're still serving soldiers, and as such, we like straight lines, we like things in uniform, so now my riders are going to show their control and their skill by performing a perfectly straight line down the arena. And as they do, as they move past you, let's have a huge round of applause there for my reverse riders. And now preparing for his gymnastics routine, we have Carl, oh, Lance Corporal Perry Wilson. Ready along with six other riders, he is going to perform the parallel bar. And of course, what else do you do when you're hanging upside down between two motorcycles? But you get a magazine out, you give it a read. He might even give you a wave. If he does, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, let's give him a wave back, shall we? Let's give him a bit of a clap. Now, Perry here doesn't look like a big lad. But considering he's hanging upside down there, he weighs an absolute ton. So how about we have a big clap and a big cheer for my support riders as well? Now, you might recognise this next trick, or you might recognise the position, for a sports day maybe, but this trick is known as the wheelbarrow. So, Corporal Hitchrow here, he's the one on front, he's the one controlling the bike, steering it around, he's the one responsible for knocking the cones over and giving me something to do. And then we have Corporal Angel there, who's working incredibly hard to keep that balance. my riders they have hidden talents and one of them that they like to keep very hidden is known as juggling so this trick here the court jester sick tibbing's accidentally admitted he could juggle and as such he's thrown at the top juggling now he didn't even let me get to the part about me saying he hasn't dropped any juggling balls for a while because he's already dropped one so ladies and gentlemen let's give him some encouragement just to make sure he keeps hold of them and let's give him let's give him a bit more pressure as he's coming down because I can tell you the pressure for him not to drop any more because he has no more spares is immense. Let's give him a clap as he comes on down the arena there. So we've had two bikes crossover. We've had three bikes crossover. We've had them doing it in reverse this time. If you can count, you can see we have now got four bikes in the arena. So once again, they're all working together in fours, looking over their shoulder. They hit their markers. They accelerate on trying to get as close as they possibly can. Now 
these are all second, third year riders. They're very experienced, and to get up to this level, they walk these rides over and over again before they get up to the speed you're seeing today. This clearly requires a huge amount of practice and precision, and timing is key and important and vital, as is the acceleration, the power, and the braking of these bikes. away if you were a little bit nervous there thankfully they have all made it through so as my riders form up and move back in ladies and gentlemen boys and girls let's have a huge round of applause there for my charlie's diamond riders selection course they learn some more basic tricks and this is one of our basic tricks being done one of our first year riders he joined us just a few months ago now this trick is known as the eagle very much like the angel however this time he's facing outwards and like a surfer he's using his body weight to steer the bike around yeah, basic now this next trick needs a little bit of encouragement and the reason it needs some encouragement is because last couple ray is going to stand up on the big strong shoulders of couple with danny goodwin and just using balance and Danny's head, he is going to stay up there. Now he's only done this a few times, so let's give him some encouragement to get himself up. Now as you can tell by the look on his face, he is a little bit sceptical, he's a bit nervous. I think we need a bit more clap in here to get him up straight. He certainly needs that there. He goes up. Oh, oh, and he stands up for the final bit, ladies and gentlemen. Let's give him a big clap as they're coming on in. And he gets himself up straight at the end. And now for the, one of the biggest tricks, we have 10 men on one bike. This trick is known as the tableau. It shows quite how hard our bikes have to work and how flexible my guys are. And really where our Davida helmets come into their own. Because the men on the bottom, as you can see, their heads are bumping along the floor. They're hitting the tyres. So give them a wave, give them a clap as they come on past you there. So to be a white helmet, clearly you need to be able to ride a bike, not just forwards, but also backwards, and to be able to multitask. That's been perfectly demonstrated here by Sergeant Arnold with the reverse juggle. Now Sig Timmings has dropped one ball. Let's see if Sergeant Arnold can do better. So I think he needs some pressure adding as well, ladies and gentlemen. Let's give him a clap as he's coming on down. Let's add a little bit of pressure to him. You can see the concentration on his face. And it looks like he's kept hold of them today. That is a first. Now oh, he dropped one at the end. And num now come careering out of our pits, we have the trick known as the Maltese Cross. Now this is a deceptively difficult trick. At this point, you'll think reverse riding is easy. However, because the weight is so high up, Corporal Fraser here has to work incredibly hard to steer it around. Now he's not a big lad, despite what he says to everybody, he's not a big lad, so he's working incredibly hard to be able to steer this. You can see quite how hard he is for how much he's leaning. So as they come in, ladies and gentlemen, again, let's show our appreciation for these guys here. Now all of our bikes, they are classic Triumph T140 motorcycles. They have all been custom built by members of the team, for the team. Now the next trick you can see moving into the arena is known as the reverse 14s. We saw it going forwards earlier, however clearly this is going backwards. However, the distance of difference on this one has actually been written by Corporal Mackey, he's the man on the front. And on the back there we have the beaming smile of Lance Corporal Angel. He's smiling so much because he got rid of the black peak recently. However, let's see if he managed to keep it off today. And now coming out at possibly one of the fastest speeds they possibly can, we have the treat known as the Double Angel. This really does use a huge amount of coordination and trust and apparently speed as they're coming on round. Now they make it look very easy, but once again, having thrown the team sergeant on the floor a number of times attempting this, it is a lot more difficult. Now I say about Corporal Angel smiling, the reason is because he is performing this trick, the most difficult trick arguably we'll do today, known as the forward ladder. Now admittedly he is going forwards, but the reason this trick is possibly the most difficult one we'll do is because once he gets himself comfortable, I think he's going to go for a second lap. 
But once he gets himself comfortable, he'll get the bike straight. He has to climb up the ladder. He has to climb down the other side and then take control. Let's give him a little wave as he's coming on past there. But as he hits the top of the arena, ladies and gentlemen, he is going to get himself comfortable. He'll go up that ladder. He'll come down the other side and he'll take control. Now this is a lot more difficult in practice than it is in theory. So as he goes for it, let's give him a huge round of applause. He climbs up that ladder. He climbs down the other side. And he manages today. Let's give him a huge round of applause there for Global Angel. Now the next trick, one of our iconic tricks, one of the biggest tricks we'll do for you today. Notice the five bike fan. This uses a huge amount of my riders. Now, as I said, there's no supports, there's no straps. It is being held together purely by the strength of my guys, especially in this heat. Let's give them a wave, let's give them a clap for the, uh, for the five bike fan. Because I can tell you by now they are pretty hot, they are pretty tired as they're coming on in.